this time folding with a heavy wet got some Semperfly Nano Silk here in Turkey D in brown I just had a bit of wax just get a little bit more grip to it starting it off here because <coughs> it is a slippy thread you could add a little bit of lacquer or super glue to the hook shank as well as another option with this scissors it's acting up <coughs> so first thing I'm going to do when I get down here is I'm going to add some Lurex and it's uh, basically it's a holographic orange in, in a medium it's going to catch that in it's going to run the tread down over to here and back up to that where I tied it in and I get some clear lacquer you can use super glue as well or something similar. I'm just going to add a couple of drops there just to make it sticky. And then I'm just going to wind this over the over the lacquer here. Back to the starting point. I'll just catch it in with two turns either side. Then I just move my thread out of the way. Snip it off. And I'm going to get a cock pheasant center tail a natural dyed orange and it's a natural brown dyed orange it's not bleached and dyed orange so it has a brownie orange look to it as you turn him with kind of any carvers on him up and you're looking at about roughly one and a half times the the body length of the fly here Catch those in, you're looking at you know around seven ish, could be six, could be eight, that sort of an amount anyway, for your tail. On the way back down, I'm catching my wire rib. I'm using a Semperfly copper wire rib here in 0 0.2 millimeters. I'm just going to keep that slightly underneath on my side, bring the thread back down. I'm going to reapply the wax to the thread because the old nano silk is kind of shiny and slippy. So the dubbing on this, I'm going to use some fiery brown. Uh, it's the light fiery brown by uh, Frankie McPhillips. I have, I think, the full range of the original colors of. I think it was 48 um, colors in the range. Great Dublin for the traditional Irish type flies. Just and you just want to get a nice body of it up to where I I'm going to leave a space here because we're roughly talking about three hackles, so hammered hackle and two in front. Um, on the bigger sizes, you will see people um, hammer down two hackles. Um, I think on a size eight, it's probably worth doing. On a ten, I generally don't. And I catch that in by the stem. I want the longest fibers at the front. Let's make sure it's caught in there. Seems to be. And gonna give it a couple of turns at the front because it'll help support the, the the softer hackles on the front as well so give it two or three turns there just to, to bulk up that area and then start to open out the turns as you come down to the, the body um, that's the way I like to tie them catch that in with the wire and get about four turns on a size 10 bring it up through your hackles just try and keep the hackles swept back a little bit. They will move forward temporarily. Just pull them all back. Get a couple of turns in front. If you want any little bits of seals or that are sticking out there, you can just nip out. That's really that big a deal. Twist that off. Let's 
snip off the end of your hackle. You might be able to use that on another fly or would, if I was tying just a normal fiery brown white fly, I'd probably get the front hackle out of that, so I keep that. Um, put out the other one I have here. And if you, it's up to you whether you want to do this now or later. You can tease out some of the dubbing with a Velcro brush. So, uh, there's a nice um, fiery brown hackles I have there. So two, two capes that are dyed fiery brown. One is a little bit darker, that one's that was a little bit of a warmer colour, which I like. Next hackle then is a, <clears throat> it's a French partridge feather dyed orange. And when you dye these French partridge feathers, they tend to come out slightly darker than, than you expect because the original normal feathers aren't white, so um, they're this colour. So they, when they take the dye, the colour changes slightly. Um, I have a friend who dyes most of my feathers and all my fluorescent colours. He does a nice job on them. So let's catch that in. And just two turns, two turns, catching these in by the tip. And then just going to trim those off. I like to get the feathers myself and, uh, and get them dyed because you can see just the shine on these. These fresh feathers are it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat um, these feathers. So we'll take a couple of turns just to build this up. Just stroke the fibers back as you go. And be moving, edging slightly forward, but don't worry about that. We we'll, we'll brush all that back and trap it down with the nano silk at the end. So. Don't worry if you're coming up forward towards the eye at this stage. Um, you don't you don't have to bring them slightly forward. It's just the way I tend to wind my hackles, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it again. Just gonna stroke everything back there. Just catch it down. Okay, then I'm just gonna get at that stem. It's underneath the the hook here. So rather than Messing about and maybe cutting my thread, I'm just going to rotate the vise this time. Just depends where your hackle stem ends up. That's where it ended up for me. Again, don't have to do this, but if you want to kind of just spread out, disperse your um, fringe partridge feathers, then you can just give it a rub bit of velcro brush. So it's going to run my silk right back to the front of the hackle there. I'm going to catch in a natural French partridge. You like French partridge or uh, drake wood and neck feathers for the front of these, just the colour that they are. Um, I vary it on the patterns. Experimentation, tying lots of different variations. You get what works successfully for you. So I suppose it's looking partly about what looks nice. Some patterns look really nice when you photograph them. Other patterns don't look as nice, but they look really nice to fish, which I suppose is one of the main purposes of of dressing up a fly. Um, so these look slightly shorter than the than the orange um, dyed fringe partridge that I added on there. So again, it's it's up to you. You might want to the same length or longer whatever appearance that you like so I'm just brushing them all back as best I can then I'm just going to come in here and get two turns on the stem and I'll get everything swept back and get a couple of turns in front of that stem as well and it's kind of building up a nice small neat head area um, just happens that the stem has managed to appear to be underneath again so he had the fly look neater anyway, but it wasn't that deliberate. Again, very lightly, just gonna touch them back, see how that looks. And um, you got that nice fiery brown and that, that nice rich orange, and then you've got your your natural one there. I don't like the look of, so I'm just gonna, gonna break that off and trim it. I don't want to do any more velcro on it, so 
Um, this one I'm not worried about, that'll make its way back. It's just a hooking device. So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get my whip finish tool and I'm going to give that just two turns just to catch it in place. I'm going to trim it off. And the head of this fly I use is um, basically you're looking for a fluorescent orange head for this one. I like fluorescent heads on a lot of these. Don't have to have them. I just like them on, particularly for lock mask. I like the the fluorescent colors. So um, this is a Semperfly Classic Wax Six Aught in fluorescent orange. I'm just going to catch it. I'm going to try and get maybe five or six turns or so, and hopefully then my waist end will come away and everything won't. Um, slide off. So I'm just going to build up the head of this. Try and get a. That would be something get caught. Try and get a, a neat enough head. Just a little bit of fluff. It seems to be. Seems to be there. Got it. And uh, get my whip finish tool then. And let's give this a couple of turns. So, as you know, I like to add a drop of lacquer before I snip up after the, the last whip finish. So, here's one on top. Just a habit I developed when I was young and I learned to tie. And just, I'm going to turn it upside down and add another bit of. Another bit of um, lacquer. So you can tie these wet maize in all types of colors. Um, just see that head, um, it is UV reactive. The feathers on this one aren't. Um, some of the wet maize patterns that I've been tying are. So you can check out other videos. Um, I tie a couple of fluorescent ones that, that I really like for late season if I reach across to the fly stand here. Um, so I have a, there's an olive one here with a hot head, there's one with a fluorescent green partridge, fluorescent yellow is very fluorescent, and there's one with a um, fluorescent pink. Again, if I just, if a duller light it'd probably show up more, but um, the yellow will show up a lot, yellow is really fluorescent. Um, the head on that one is Again, some fluorescence through these greens and the olive one, just just the, the head. Um, and it does obviously this orange one. So, um, look, I suppose it's a matter for debate how effective, but I like to have a selection. So, um, that's the fiery brown. I'm going to do a claret one at some stage as well. Um, uh, and they're kind of most of the colors, so yellow. Um, I could do a natural one, I do with a brown palmered hackle or a cream badger hackle on it, it's good. Um, and they all, they all work um, on their days, no matter just, you know, which ones tend to work better and which, which light conditions and wave conditions. So, there you go.